white girl in a dress partially turned away from the cover and often running walked so that these new YA covers could run. I bet my girls were just running away to escape the terrible fate of being another victim to the YA publishing industry and make them participate in another generic plotline. Hi, it's Divya G. What does the G stand for? The G stands for, good golly, my dear. All these covers are the same. Are you sure you're not a Gemini? Let's talk about cover trends in the past, like, three years. Trends in book covers are not only useful, they are an art form, a statement, reflecting the periods and movements in which they were made. For example, the revolutionary technology of the photo camera and the Polaroid popularity. In the 70s, we saw more covers using photo elements, abstraction, and minimalistic geometric design, which follows the art movement. They also help us to classify genre, story, and target readers of a novel. As much as we would like for the cover to just be a symbolic depiction of the novel, more often than not, these publishing houses choose designs that will help pimp out these books bye-bye. They want to use what works and what sells. And a lot of the time, designers are under the constraints of what the publishing company wants. So readers these days are just blessed. Don't get me wrong, there's still books out here looking like the cover version of Quasimodo. But in like 2012, we had this awful pervasive trend of stock photo cover art. Either because cover artists weren't commissioned as much or when they were commissioned, they were paid for in coochie hairs. They only had access to the cracked version of Photoshop because what is this guy? They had the beautiful ball gown dress trend, which a lot of you guys are familiar with. And then this girl transitioned a little bit into girl drowning in water. My poor girl just kept drowning. At this rate, she's gonna evolve into a crab. And then we had this iconic John Green crayon aesthetic, okay? Okay. I've made a lot of videos parodying these types of covers and how you can make your own called How to Design a Trashy Y8 cover series, which will be in the description down below if you want to watch it or up here if you want to watch it later. <laughs> and since then, Y8 covers have stepped up their game. They kind of branched off into bold and playful typography, illustrated graphics, bright colors, and that's for all books, not just YA, although each genre does have its own specific niches and nuances, like for example, <laughs> the damn snake. Yeah, um, can I copy your homework? Uh, yeah, just make sure to like change it up so it doesn't look like you copied. Don't worry, don't worry, I got you, bro. Like, she is a paid actress. Queen of the Conquered, here she is. Miss Girl, pretty in pink. Bada bounce on the set of Legally Blonde. We also have her in The Rule of Many. The Queen of Nothing. Now, if that ain't a whole fat mood. Ninth House symbolizing something dark, fantastical, mature. Also, dark age. I went to go check, were these covers all made by the same person? No. Are all of these books under the same publisher? No. So then I went, mm, let's see what stock photo they're using. So I went on Shutterstock and I typed in Black Snake and bam, look. Ugh. Like, I can see why designers would use this. Like, the composition of the snake and the 3D texture makes it, like, a pretty substantially compelling piece already. And it's kind of versatile. You can use it to kind of, like, intertwine with the typography in, like, a playful manner. And black snakes are often used to symbolize suspicion, fear, power, deep transformation. Likewise, you can expect these novels to feature many of the same emotions and themes and motifs. And snakes paired with foliage seems to be a very popular trope. The snake adds very interesting juxtaposition or contrast with the delicacy and the femininity of the flowers and it ties us into the natural world. Pussy in power, power. Venom. Venom. Murder? Crime? Mystery? Raggy? C'est bonjour, nous avons moins une classe de réflexion en de cover. There's a different variation of this cover for YA contemporary summer books. Think Geek Girl. It's also used for psychological mystery novels. It's the idea that there's something behind the camera in the reflection of the glasses that the reader slash audience can't see. Hence, indicating that there's something hidden. For example, this is me that this is telling me this is probably a meta mystery. Ignoring the blaring serial killer hint in the title. Eh? Did someone say a book set in a foreign country? Turmeric filter. This is also a film trope that's common in American slash Western films. Where if they want to depict countries of the global south, they will add this 
striking yellow tingy filter to everything. The yellowness makes viewers associate that particular land with scenes of deprivation or poverty or heat. And I do think whilst the colour can be used in appropriate settings, for example, if you're trying to indicate something like a dry desert scenario, they use this almost unnecessarily and almost exclusively for foreign countries to the west to make areas seem a bit more primitive and like grimy. and it can and it has been argued that this filter is used in a very stereotypical fashion and has negative impacts on representation i'd personally argue that you can also see this in books and they just be adding so much curry powder to all these books they be looking like jaundice sword sword swords there a single watch out for that sword almost exclusively part of the fantasy slash historical fiction genre swords have long been used in novels signal courage battle power and chivalry Fury born, which if you say a bit too fast, my dear, sounds a little bit like fairy ah! Two crowns, two queens, two women entangled in gold and blood and war. It certainly makes for a striking motif as the focal point or even as additions in a cover. With all the covers opting for this particular type of symbolism, although the 3D designs and patterns embellishing some of the covers are gorgeous, without very unique or strong elements of your design, I feel personally as if it makes a cover more difficult to be truly iconic or memorable. Because then it's like, oh, you know, uh, what's that book again? Um, you know, the one with like the sword on the cover? <laughs> Uh, geez, I have so many more genres and trends to talk about, but I want to gauge if you guys like this type of content. So if you do, holla at me, let me know with a like or a comment. If you yourself are a ha -ha, hashtag I love graphic design is my passion type of person and you've noticed some of these trends. Let me know the fuck now, bitch. Whilst I'm all down for like the truly, I'm not like other cover book the cover design. Cover trends are so useful and they're so easy to let you know the fuck what the book is about like for all the g's that suck you out to the end i'll give you a smelly hug come on armpits coming in the way ah my parents never hugged me so so this is what you get follow me on twitter and instagram and if you like my content and you want to support me i would appreciate a subscribe like or a comment in the in the in the in the okay too much coffee i'm gonna have severe anxiety now and i won't be able to sleep boop Certain book covers really help reveal the whole insides to you. Because these guys are blessed. You are blessed. I am telling you, like Jesus, God, Allah, Vishnu, Brahma, Guru, Nanak, Deva, Ratham, bro, they're all blessing you. Don't judge a book by its cover. Like, yes, I am going to judge a book by its cover. What else am I going to judge a book about? The contents of its character. In order for me to even open the first page, the cover better be looking aesthetic and pretty. I was like, darling, I'm not trying to be superficial. That's just the way the world works, you know? Just gotta, you gotta be looking like, catch my eye, like, hey, yo, senorita. I might take you off the shelf myself. <laughs>